Let's do this. Hello, everyone. Thank you all for joining. It's time for another exciting lightning talk. I'm Parak Kartka, your host for tonight. I'm the Senior Director of Enterprise Solutions at Enrhythm, and we have a lot of exciting content lined up for you in the upcoming weeks. Our lightning talks are hosted every Thursday at 5.15 p.m. Eastern time. And each week, one of our practice area consultants uh, speaks on the latest and greatest technology trends in the industry that will keep, uh, keep you learning and growing in your career. Uh, this week, Alex Amoros, who is a passionate iOS developer with us, um, will uh, give us an overview of dependency injection. Um, as a lot of you know, dependency injection is a commonly used technique that allows reusing code, inserting mock data, and it really simplifies testing. Uh, so it's really important concept to understand for everyone. Uh, so without further ado, let's get it started, Alex. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, let's see. So my lightning talk for today is depending, uh, dependency injection. Um, what's a dependency injection? Prague basically covered it its ability to uh to give an object the dependence needed from another um it's really good when you want to decouple code from other other sections uh reusability also um doing mock sessions so there are three types of uh dependency injection um the ones that i see most um is through the the constructor injection and the setter property injections, uh, but usually within a a getter, you don't necessarily see it with the setter uh, interface function. I barely see it. I'm not quite. I haven't seen it with my other projects, uh, but they do still have it. I think I saw it on my project too. So for initializer injection, uh, I have like a, a simple class, Alex. Um, I have a pet uh, that conforms uh, to the protocol pet. And you have three, three ways of actually setting your, your variable pet. Uh, so either passing it through the initializer, assigning it to the variable after you instantiate the class, or you can pass in the, the object and assign it through the method um, setter. So the first one we have um, through the passing through the initializer, once you uh, do so, you can call in pet noise and you should, uh, and it would print out meow. The next one that I have, oh, wait, I actually missed two others. Uh, the next one that we have is a proper injection. Uh, once you initialize your class Alex, um, you call in your variable pet and you instantiate the class that follows the uh, protocols of pet and assign it to pet. And the next one is um, instantiating uh, Create a new class for Alex and passing your dependence through the method where you set set pet and give the the actual object that you need to set it up. Now the benefits for dependency injection it prevents tight coupling between libraries in the code base. Great for unit testing and use uh, reusability. Let me show you a little uh, playground that I have. Can you guys see my screen? Yep. Or not? Uh, let's see. Pry, can you see it or not? Yeah, it's 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 not full screen though. It says okay. Then, Let's see. You can go to view and slides uh, slideshow. Okay, so I created a protocol uh, API providing which uh, should have a function uh, fetch data which 
uh, is to give you a string. I create another class, uh, API provider, which consumes API providing. Um, and we confirm by API providing by returning a given uh, string data and make it a, a singleton. Now we're another class uh, called service. It's gonna be utilizing API providing and it's gonna get it through the initializer that we have. And for the dependency injection that, that we're gonna be doing, uh, this is uh, the main of the meat that we have for it. Uh, class resolver, we're gonna have a variable called maps um, dictionary, uh, which takes an object identifier and any object. Um, we're going to be basically having a register and resolve class. The register class, the register function is going to be taking any class that we pass it in, and it's going to store it inside the, the maps uh, for us to use afterwards. And for the resolve, we're going to be passing in the type that we want um, and getting the object that we need back. So by doing so, we do uh, resolver.share, and we can instance a uh, resolver. Now to store the class that we, or register the, the object that we want, we're gonna be doing resolver.register API provider.shared. Now to get that uh, instance back, we're gonna be uh, telling what type that we need back are going to be saying resolver.resolve, and it's going to try to find that the instance that we have stored in the maps. And if we do find it, we're going to assign it back and pass it through the service. And then we can get our, our data that we, that we did. So we're going to um, run this once, and we should be getting data. Any questions?